hi and welcome to another episode of Optimizing RPG. Now I did want to go through the second score point in Tendry's Tale in this episode, that's called Defeated Goblin King. However, just before I do, I did want to take a look back at the first score point, uh, particularly at Rule 3, and try to explain a little bit better about the um, path that I took and the routing around that level. So um, before we begin, here we go, we're at the right place here. Uh, so the most important and difficult part of optimizing this score point is actually figuring out how to tackle this level. Because of the one-way arrows, it's not quite clear what path you need to take, and I did want to explain a little bit more about that. So if we take a look at the general layout of the level, uh, we've got this important set of force arrows that moves up through the middle of the level that give us quite a few attack gems and then dump us ultimately into this big path that goes along the top. Now this big path that goes along the top comes down the level either over this way through the left bringing us back to the start or it can go down the right and ultimately again bring us back to the start. Uh, now, this means that there's essentially two main ways we can go because of things like this attack gem. We do at some point need to come down in this direction and end up coming over here. And when we come over here, we've got this secret area down here, which has quite a lot of attack. Now, interestingly, because of this attack gem here, we really want to open this door and that actually leads us another path that comes back to the start. So because of that we know that um, and because we have to come down here once we've come down in this direction we have a path back to the start without ever having to open this door so not opening this door is going to be really good for us because we actually have a way to route around it assuming we can get up to the top uh, and we always have a way up to the top because we want to access this room here because it has um, quite a lot of attack in it this room here is just excellent you definitely always want it um, and we can access this secret room by directly coming up here which also has a lot of attack so as you can see we have a route that goes around here and this picks up actually most of the attack in the rule by taking this you know just by following force arrows so we definitely want to take that path and avoid this yellow door so that then leads us to the question of what about this side of the level um, because we need to come over here for the shield and all the attack gems we have this second path that comes up through the level and ultimately we have one more choice which is um, this door here and actually this door here so because we can come up through here and actually come back this way and pick up this attack what we could do is avoid this door and then when we come up in this direction we come all the way down and we open this door instead but instead in our path we chose this door um, and there's a couple of reasons for that number one we do avoid these wraith wings entirely by not opening this door uh, it's not a huge deal they do become worth nothing at some point however because we want to go this way at the start to get to this important shield um, if we chose to take this bottom path um, we would end up having to fight these guys if we went straight across here we could come up through the middle at the start uh, so I'm jumping all over the place here uh, run up this way come through here and then on our way back come through this way and these guys are free um, but because 
opening this and going this way, which we want to do anyway at some point, is basically equivalent. In the grand scheme thing, it doesn't really matter which, except for the fact that by opening this one, we do get to pick this up earlier on our way to the shield, and ultimately that is why we chose to open this door instead of this one. Uh, alternatively, you can see here, this door didn't need to ever be opened because of the way that from here we can always return back to the start through this long circuitous route around here and then come back in and come up this way so we can avoid having we can access both sides of this door by using our other path so we do avoid opening this one as well so that's just a little bit more about why we take the path that we do we are actually we do actually tend to be um railroaded down a certain way due to the huge amounts of attack that this level places in all sorts of places including down here and this over here if this attack was not here and like this health potion then it would probably be worth you know you necessarily not opening this door but actually opening this one you would come down here and then you would come back up and you might wish to go through there which also means that you know you could therefore come through here perhaps slightly earlier and pick these up early but because this here forces us to come through here we choose to open this door instead of this one Anyway, I hope that was interesting for you, um, but instead what I would like to do now is um, take a look at the second score point. So the second score point in Tendry's Tale is actually very, very similar to the first score point. Now if you remember when we did the first score point, we chose to avoid all of this because we lost about 52 health by picking this up. However, in the second score point, um, because we don't want to ever come back here, because we're not killing this guy, we are skipping past him by taking this route. If we were to come back later when this didn't cost us 52 health, we would actually have to fight this grey man here, and he's never going to become free in the second score point. You know, he will always deal some amount of damage. So it's actually worth, when we do the second score point, making just one small difference to what we did in the first score point, and that is actually taking these items here and essentially doing every other piece of cleanup that we did in the uh, first part of the game, because, you know, we're never going to actually come back to rule three. So with that in mind, um, we're just going to very quickly head over to rule 4 now that we have that extra 2 attack and blue key and we can get started at looking at the next part of the game and how we do that so there we go, we just never trigger that score point at all Now, as usual, um, money is not a problem in the first half of the game, so we will just open all of these doors as we see them. So here's the first decision that we have to make in Rule 4. Um, we could kill this goblin. He cost us 480 HP to, get, to make progress. Or we could kill this yellow door and kill these two ant lions which cost 60 each and then ultimately come back down this path and make our way back to the start to the um, part of the level that we need to progress now we do eventually want to come up this way however we basically have a choice do we want to open this door and kill these guys now or do we want to skip killing these guys and just come straight through here uh, there are attack gems by going this path and keys and health but we have lots and lots of health and lots and lots of keys and at the moment do we want to kill these mad eyes to get this attack they are quite cheap but um, until we know for sure whether we want them I mean a single attack gem or two it's not making any difference to the goblins at the moment and I think 
it's not going to make a difference to the Grey Man as well. So by going up there and picking up the attack early, we're not actually going to make this guy cheaper. In addition to that, um, a key is worth the same amount of score as 400 hit points. And so while the Goblin actually costs more than 400 hit points, we are spending an extra 120 to kill these two ant lions. And if we come back just a little bit later for attack, it's not going to take only two more attack gems to make these guys cheaper. Um, we can save 120 HP, which actually means that this killing the Goblin is cheaper than taking this path if we don't want to access these soon. Um, and in fact, of course, you know, we can just go straight back up here after killing the goblin. So yeah, so it is cheaper to take the goblin. Um, this gray man cannot be made any cheaper. We've picked up every single piece of attack except for four so far. So we have no choice. We always have to take that much damage to kill him. Just skipping this cutscene. And we might as well open these doors. So and now we have another choice of directions to go. We could go open these two yellow doors, pick up a green key, um, come through here and make our way into the next part of the level. Uh, our ultimate goal in this level is this piece of equipment here, the Goblin Biter. Um, it doesn't give us any extra attack but it massively reduces the amount of damage we take from goblins and we need it to kill the boss. Um, we do have a blue key already so we can go to it as soon as we can reach it otherwise we would have to collect this blue key which means killing this rock golem and the grey man but because we picked up that spare blue key by not getting the wooden shield we can ignore the rock golem for a while. Um, the alternative path we can take is to come down here, um, kill this evil eye, open this door, kill this grey man, kill this, um, sorry, open this door and kill one of these guys and make our way through to the next part of the level. Now there is a bunch of stuff down here that we want, um, keys, there is more attack, um, but of course we can also access it from this direction as well later um, and that gives us a way back because there is a one-way arrow here so we will at some point have to traverse this path whether we open this now here or whether we do this one here is a choice however the green key is worth two yellow keys because a green key is 20 points and every yellow key is 10 so this, because it gives us a little bit of health, is actually a positive score trade. So we definitely want to do it at some point. And if we definitely want to open it at some point, um, then it's a good idea to take this path now. And going down this path, we can access these goodies by coming through the other direction at some point. Again, we do, we do want to come down here because you may notice that this attack gem and this key and these two keys, we either must open this door or we must open this one. So if we go this way, we get our positive score trade in this green key that we actually need to carry on further. Um, and we eventually open this. So we, it is best to actually avoid ever opening this because our path, we can still make it to everything we want to and we must collect this now so that's why we are going to travel in this direction first of all uh, now this gray man if we had chosen to go this way we could have killed the two evil eyes killed this evil eye picked up this attack and this gray man would be cheaper but because we don't we've decided we don't want to open this door um, and the grey man if we drop him it's only 45 hp so again we you know we are we are going to kill this guy with whoops <laughs> with without hitting his next checkpoint so we'll just carry on uh, free attack over here so we might as well grab it now uh, we have to open this door to progress there's nothing else to spend the green key on so let's do it now 
I suppose technically you could actually um, not pick up that other blue key from the previous rule yet, save because it cost us two green keys and barred straight through. But we will need the blue key and at the moment killing this rock golem. He just needs a whole bunch of attack and he's going to be very expensive. So it's still good to spend the green keys and it's not like picking up any further green keys in this level is a particular hardship because as you will see down here um, two more yellow keys for a green again very easy trade for us to make there's a secret room here we'll come back to that later and we do have more free attack as well by collecting this so we're just gonna grab this while we're here so, so far, you know, we've killed very little and we, we sort of want to avoid killing as many monsters as possible until we get more, more attack. Uh, so we can just rush straight for the Goblin Biter. Now, do we actually want to cross these arrows? I've already gone ahead and done it. Um, as you can see, without the Goblin Biter, we still need four attack gems to make goblins cheaper. But um, of all the attack that we have had available to us so far, we have to kill a goblin, uh, kill a goblin, kill a goblin, and it's not really worth... Well, we could pick up this one, and we could have gone back and we could have collected this one, and also this one, but that's only six attack by killing non-goblin monsters. Um, well, uh, there is this one as well. However... What do we save by reducing that? We save 80 hit points. And for killing these monsters here, uh, well, he's free now. We could actually grab that one for free. But these guys are not free. They cost us 55 each. And just by picking up this one and this one, you know, we, we've actually spent more than we save from... Um, killing the goblin you know you only save 80 hit points and that would have cost us 110 to pick up all these attack gems not to speak about the amount of um, extra damage we would take by doing all of this now and picking up this one because you know again the gray man is also quite expensive so um, what we will do is we will just rush straight for the goblin biter because we can pick up enough attack later by killing the goblins to reduce the amount of damage we take from the evil eyes and ultimately save 110 health or more instead of just saving 80 from a goblin somewhere because we have to kill this one no. So we're just going to run through and do this. Pick up the health while we're here. About time. So again, there's there's no reason for us to skimp on picking up the health now. There are no percentage damage sources in this part. So now that we have the Goblin Biter, you'll notice these goblins. Uh, we do a lot more damage. We take a lot less from them. Uh, but it has gone up to needing 16 more attack to save any more health. Now we couldn't possibly have hit this 6 to 16 attack sorry 16 extra attack by the time we got here without killing goblins so it was really no benefit at all to um, go around and collect all of that health so uh, we must kill this guy to leave and this one as well so now that we're back out in the open we can reconsider again what we want to do and what order to tackle things uh, this guy's free so we're just going to do that now and we might as well pick this up here. Uh, so this guy here, one attack to save 60 HP. We can get some savings from this rock golem, so we're going to leave him for now. But uh, something that is important in this level is to actually consider how much attack we can actually get up to um, in the level in total. And uh, specifically how many goblins we have to kill, because this rule has a lot of attack hidden behind goblins. So there's one attack gem behind a goblin. There's two attack gems behind goblins. Uh, there's three, there's four, there's five. So there's actually um, 10 attack in the level. 
that uh, we must kill a goblin to achieve. Now the highest attack that we can get, I believe, hits 92, um, which implies, in fact, we can count all of the other attack gems that do not involve killing goblins to reach. So there is one. There is two. There is three. There is four. And I think that's it. So there's only f there's only eight more attack that we can get by not killing a goblin. And if we take a look, we need 14 attack to reduce the amount of damage we take from goblins. So because we have this cap of how much attack we can get on this score point, we know that um, we are going to have to kill some goblins to actually reach the next attack checkpoint for goblins. Like there just isn't this much attack available. So because there was only um, eight attack and there is 10 behind goblins, we know that we can get, uh, let's see, we can reduce this to um, only needing eight more attack. Um, and we can actually just go and kill the goblins now because we know that we would have to kill a certain number of goblins anyway at this number of attacks per hit and there's no more defense to get. So we're just gonna start killing them until we reach um, plus eight attack for next attack checkpoint on the goblins. So now we have reached the stage where we can um, start collecting other sources of attack and stop killing goblins because we can make them cheaper if we pick up all of the remaining attack and we save 80, which is quite a lot. They're the most damaging monster per attack at the moment. They've got the highest attack stat of everything except the boss. So we now want to focus on picking up all of the other attack. And if we do, we will make goblins cheaper. Uh, we do need to assess if that's actually worthwhile. Uh, this rock golem here, it's gonna take eight more attack if we want this. Uh, to make this cheaper. Now, unfortunately, two of the goblins are actually hiding behind this rock golem. We cannot collect this. And we cannot collect this without actually killing the rock golem first. So um, they're actually, I don't believe there actually is eight attack. I think there's only six. Uh, there's two, there's four. There is six. Yeah, so, so the rock golem is actually as cheap as he's ever going to get at this score point. We cannot reduce his attack to zero in this score point. So we're just going to kill him now and we're going to collect this. Uh, ten more attack for the grey man. We... I don't believe we are going to hit this because, again, there is only 10 more attack in the level and one of them is behind this grey man, so he will not get any cheaper, so we can just make this decision now. Uh, so we might as well just pick up this stuff while we're here. Uh, there is, of course, no point in ever hitting this guy because we do actually have an alternative way around which is uh, over here, which we want to do to collect this attack. So because we've determined um, that he is never gonna get cheaper because there is some attack hiding behind him, we should take a look to kill him now. Uh, we have just crossed an attack checkpoint without even realizing for the Mad Eyes. These guys are now cheaper. Uh, we hadn't even considered whether to start hitting them yet. Like it just happened because of the, um, the way that we have been forced to kill a certain number of these monsters regardless at the earlier attack checkpoint. So now that these guys are as cheap as they're ever going to be, we might as well go ahead and kill them now. And we will collect these while we're here. And we will collect this while we're here because it's behind a um, grackle gate it's basically free for this score point. Uh, this guy will never get cheaper, so let's just kill him now. It is, of course, much better to kill the eye than open the door. It's a lot cheaper. So 
So here's another freebie but without having to think about anything else. Uh, again, these guys, they're not going to get any cheaper, so we will just do these now. Um, whether you kill these now, obviously, if we went further into the game, we could make these monsters cheaper. So we wouldn't be just grabbing everything. We would have to assess things slightly differently. But for this score point, because we only ever get to 92 attack, uh, if you kill this guy from the back, he is actually, you do save 55 HP. Uh, our map shows yellow, it's actually just this map pickup that we don't need, so I'm not going to bother picking it up. Now the only attack that remains is behind these two goblins, um, and we have just hit the next attack checkpoint for these. We've just passed it right now, so we did get to save 160 HP by doing it this way round and leaving them till last. And because we pretty much attacked everything about as cheap as it was going to be anyway, I believe it was actually a full amount of 160 HP saved and not um, like a lesser amount because we wouldn't have made any other monsters cheaper by doing it in any other route. They were already as cheap as they were going to be. Uh, spending 90 for 400 HP is clearly a positive trade. And at this point, we have just gone ahead and cleared out everything in the level. So the only thing that remains is to kill the boss. Uh, we have maximum possible stats. So, and we've picked up basically every single pickup so it will never get any cheaper than this. And there we go, 3722 HP, 793 score, this is the top score. And there you can see it matches what is on first place of the leaderboard. So um, yeah, this one, it's not too difficult a rule, but what is very interesting about it is the way that um, due to the limits of how much attack you get and the monsters that they are hiding behind, you do actually end up having to kill a certain number of goblins on the earlier attack checkpoint. So you are encouraged to actually kill them first so that you can make the other monsters like the Mad Eyes cheaper by the time you get round to them. If you always just focus on killing the cheaper monster, um, you actually would have spent more overall because you killed the Mad Eye when they were a bit more expensive and you had to come back and kill the goblins anyway when picking up all the attack and you were still taking exactly the same damage as you would have done had you picked up the attack in a different order. So that is why you might as well kill the goblins first. So that was um, the second score point in Tender's Tale. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from that. Thank you for listening and watching. Goodbye.